The city of Boston is about to get a new leader in health care. Dr. Elizabeth Nabel officially takes over Brigham and Women's Hospital in January. She's coming at a time when health care is going through monumental and painful changes. She comes with an impressive background as a clinician, an academic, and a scientist at the National Institutes of Health. And she's coming back to a city that she loves. My husband and I did indeed meet at the Brigham. We were both residents uh, on the General Medicine Service. We uh, went to a, a lovely, lovely restaurant in Central Square in Cambridge uh, by the name of Panache. And uh, we were sitting at dinner, and I said to my husband, I said, Gary, don't turn around, but there's a masked man with a gun to the head of the chef. And indeed, there was an armed robbery in the restaurant okay. that evening. The owner of the restaurant was quite chagrined and apologetic and said, my goodness, if any of you would like to stay for dinner, dinner is on me. Well, the entire restaurant emptied out, except for my husband-to-be and I, because we were poor, tired, and hungry <laughs> residents. So we had a lovely dinner that evening, and we thought, well, there was considerable drama, but probably not too different from the emergency room at the Brigham at that time. <laughs> Great story, and love at first sight. It had to be absolutely, that. absolutely. <laughs> Certainly a lot has changed at the Brigham since you were last there. What's your vision for the hospital? My vision is to continue to deliver superb patient care and combine it with like the world-class research that goes on at Brigham Women's Hospital and really be a leader in 21st century academic medicine. But I think we can do it. Uh, the Brigham has a, a, a tremendous history of excellence in all domains. As busy as you will be, no doubt, with the administrative part of managing this hospital, are you planning to stay in the research part, which is obviously something you love? I, I have continued to have a research laboratory here uh, at the National Institutes of Health. My laboratory studies cardiovascular disease, and in particular, we're studying a premature aging syndrome uh, that's called hutchinson guilford progeria syndrome, in which it's a genetic uh, disease in which young children die of heart attack and stroke in their teens, a very premature aging syndrome. But interestingly enough, there are a group of investigators um, at Brigham who are studying this particular disease as well. So I'll look forward to working with them. I'll stay engaged uh, in, in the research. Uh, but indeed, this will be a tremendous opportunity for me to learn much more about the very exciting research that's going on in, in many laboratories uh, across the Brigham. I read an article that said running a hospital is the hardest management job in the world, and that was before health care reform. What's your response to that now? There's no doubt that we're going to have some stormy times ahead of us. We, we know that uh, paying for the expanded coverage that we are achieving with health care reform is going to be difficult. And we know that we're probably going to need to re-examine and redo some of the ways in, in which we currently practice medicine. We're going to have to be far more efficient. We're going to have to put an emphasis on quality. We're going to put an emphasis on prevention. You have a very diverse background, but you were telling me about the unique challenges for women in the academics in medicine. Let's talk about that a bit. You know, it, it, it's interesting, Liz. I, I thought that uh, coming back to an academic health center, I, I would see women in large numbers entering the profession of academic medicine, and I hope that that will be the case. Um, but I concern that we may not be creating the career path in academic medicine to be the most attractive for women. Historically, that period of time of, of establishing your career has always been somewhat difficult in academic medicine, but I think it's no different from business or journalism or law. And I think the concern that many of us have is that the pathway to success in okay. academic medicine is so steep and does not allow adequate work-life balance that it simply is unattractive to many young women. And we can't afford to lose women in medicine. Mm -hmm. Women now comprise 50% of medical school classes, 50% of training programs. They, they bring extraordinary gifts, perspectives, and talents to the medical profession. And I feel as a leader in academic medicine, part of my job is really to create 
a, an environment that is healthy for women so that they feel that they can be successful and achieve the kind of work-life balance they would like. What's the uh, thing you most look forward to in coming back to Boston and coming back to the Brigham and Women's Hospital? Well, uh, first of all, the Brigham is a very, very special community with very, very special people. I look forward to moving back to Boston, and we just love New England. We love the Four, the four Seasons, uh, so we're, we're really looking forward to it.